All right. Happy Monday, everybody. So good to see your faces. Thank you for taking some time to come grow yourself and work on your mindset. Um, I know it's been a while since we've had Whitney on here, but I love how ne it's never forced. Uh, Whitney, you know, she coaches people, so she gets to hear what's going on in people's minds and in their businesses. And so when we have her on here, it's usually because she feels this need. She feels things from people that need to be confronted, that need to be addressed. So that's what we do. We talk about it. Um, so Whitney has a really, really good message for you guys tonight. Um, it wasn't the title that I put on the graphic, but when we were messaging about this, um, one of the things that you can expect is to talk about, you know, being complacent in your business versus leveling up, but not leveling up for yourself, but leveling up because it's the right thing to do because <laughs> it's what you should do, uh, for lots of different reasons. So not going to take up any more of your time just so you know, Whitney is feeling a little bit sick. So <laughs> I know that we've all been a little bit under the weather. I just got over the flu for a week. Yes, we still have flus. Who knew? Um, but I'm doing much better too. So anyways, you guys, Whitney's amazing. If you've never heard from her, you're going to leave here feeling like a different person. So Whit, you're up. Thank you. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, sweet. Thanks so much. Um, so if you don't, if we haven't met before, I'm Whitney. Um, I'm a life coach for Christian female entrepreneurs. Um, I apologize for my voice. I just caught what my family had yesterday. I feel okay. Cause I took some stuff, but I just sound a little funny. Um, but I coach women just like you that have their own businesses and are balancing life and business. And, um, I coach my clients on the things that are keeping them from showing up in their business, uh, in a powerful way. I coach them on those things. Um, and I love it. A lot of you guys have been my clients or are my clients. I'm obsessed with you. Um, and I'm always going to Brett and I'm like, can I please talk to your team? I have this new thing, like she said. So um, I have a lot to share with you tonight, but this is kind of what I, I want to preface this really quick because um, it's, I, I'm going to preface it like it's a sermon. Um, when you hear this, it is going to be very easy to think, gosh, I am so glad that my upline is hearing this right now, or I am so glad that my downline is hearing this. And it's going to be very easy to um, delegate responsibility to someone else. And what I would encourage you to do is capture that thought immediately, set it aside for right then and think about how this applies to you. And then you can maybe go back and figure out a way to lead up or lead down as you want. But first I want this to apply to you directly. Um, this is going to be a little bit specific to a, um, a, a group of you guys that are kind of in the middle of your business, may have gotten to a certain rank. And I'm talking to you because I believe that you guys, if you're here tonight, what it tells me, probably what it tells Britt is you're serious about this business and you're already a leader. And so um, this, this focus tonight is on that, is on leadership. Um, so, and I even have my marker because I'm going to do something on my whiteboard, which I don't know if I've done on one of these calls. Um, okay, so the first thing that I want to do is share my screen with you. Um, take down my notes. Let's see, hold on one second. Um, okay, I'm going to show you. Can you guys all see that? A picture of me and my family? <laughs> nope, can't see that. Hold on. Oh, yeah, you can see it now. Okay, sweet. So um, that's me and my family. And when my husband had his nasty mustache that didn't last for very long. Um, and <laughs> this was at the top of um, a hike in Colorado Springs called the Manitou Incline. So Manitou Springs, if you guys don't know Colorado Springs, uh, Manitou Springs has this hike and I'm going to tell you about it, but this was us after we um, completed it. Let's see if I can get to the next page. The reason that people do this is because that's the view at the top and you can get up this mountain in about an hour. Usually I'll give you some facts on it, but it's a really pretty, it's a really beautiful hike. Okay. So this is like during kind of the day, really cool. It's in um, South Colorado. Okay, but here's the picture I want you to focus on while I'm telling you some facts about the incline, okay? And I have my notes on my phone because I can't hold them up here. Um, okay, so originally this hill 
was created to take supplies up to the top of Pikes Peak. And if you don't know anything about Colorado, we have a lot of 14ers, mountains that are 14,000 foot and up. And so this was originally designed, it had cars and like these big uh, machines that would take supplies up to the top of Pikes Peak, okay? So, and then in 1990, they shut it down and they took off the cars and all of the ropes and everything and let the, we were left with the railroad ties. Well, a group of people decided they wanted to start hiking it, okay? So this hike right here is 2,000 vertical feet, okay? So you go up 2,000 feet, it's a mile long, and you, so the elevation gain is 2,000 feet. It's 2,768 steps. Um, and if you are injured on this, it will take first responders three to four hours to get to you because of how hard it is, okay? They don't even allow dogs on it because it's too hard for even athletic dogs is what they say on the website. We've taken our dog on it before. Um, here's the kicker. Here's the crazy thing about it. Most of it is a 48% grade, but there are some spots in it that are a 68%. So it's like, if you think of a 90 degree angle up and down, straight up and down, it's, there are some spots that are almost 70 degrees in grade. So it is very steep. Like you fall backwards and you're sort of screwed, which is why they have the first responders information on the website. Um, and if you get to the top, you, it's too dangerous to go down the front. So you have to go down the backside. It's a four mile hike down the backside to get back to your car. Um, they're also, they just created a bailout spot this is what the website said about it. They said, it's a bailout point for hikers that want a shorter loop or may have underestimated the difficulty of the incline. So they have the bailout spot. Um, and, but here is, here's what I want you to see about this. When you look at this picture, if you look at the very top right up here, that's actually not the top of it. That's what they call the false summit. And if you've never done any research, and if you've never heard about the incline before, and you're just going, you get to the false summit, and you look up, I wish I had a picture of this, but you look up, and there's 300 more steps ahead of you. So you just climbed, this is not even the bottom, by the way, this is like halfway at the top. You just climbed all these steps up to the very, what you believe is the top, and then you get there, and you're not even done. You still have like a quarter of the way to go. Okay. Um, here is why I'm showing this to you. Let me see if I can get this off now. Let's see. Here's why I'm telling you about this. Is that gone now? Okay. Because this is exactly what I'm seeing in the network marketing industry. Here's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing people who are joining companies and not just Q, working tirelessly, they feel like they are sacrificing for the season. They're losing sleep. They're missing out on their family. They're hitting the ranks. And then they get to a rank in the company that feels somewhat comfortable. Okay. So I'm thinking if, if I know anything about Q, I would say this is probably like your bronze, silver, gold, maybe silver, gold, where like you're making a consistent paycheck that's really good and it feels really comfortable. But what's happening is you're hitting that mark and you're looking at what's ahead and then you're looking at what you've just accomplished and you're like, that was really hard. And I'm feeling totally burned out. And I had no idea it was going to be this hard. And so that's when the questions start coming in. Do I have what it takes? Do I want to rebuild? Because I just lost, lost half my team. Do I, do I even want to grow any further? I don't even like the team I have. Or my te this team isn't the one that's going to get me to diamond, right? It's all of these questions. And then here come the lies too, which I believe can be lies if, the, if you're not going to reach the goal that you set out to. It's, I, this is good. Like I can just, maybe I'll just like go back to work part-time. I mean, this is like comfortable. I've worked really hard. I like, I made it to a significant, for me and the company that I was with, it was a significant rank. And what I realized was after I got there, not only was I burned out, I burned my entire team out because I was the only one who was winning. I asked all of them to step up and 
and show up and push and let's go for it and let's do it. And I did it month after month after month after month. And then when I got to that point and I was like, okay, let's go to the top. They were like, no way am I doing that with you. And then the team crumbles. Why? It's because when they need you the most, and if you're at the beginning of the journey, you're seeing this, when I need you the most, if you've gotten to the rank that you were hoping for, or that feels comfortable, and then you're just going to peace out or sit back or question or wait or not push anymore. What that tells me is you haven't built a sustainable business and you haven't done it in a way that's, that is going to be a long-term career. You've treated it like a network marketing business instead of a career. So what I want to do tonight is I want to teach you how to build a sustainable business without the burnout. And I believe, especially as a coach, it's teaching your teams how to think rather than what to do. So when, when we begin like the coaching these first recruits, they follow exactly what you do. I'm sure Britt said this before, but like they, whatever, however they were brought into the business is how they're going to bring other people into this business. What they see you doing, they're going to do. It's just, they just are watching, right? More is caught rather than taught. Not sure who said that. That's how they're, that is where they're duplicating from. So here's what I want to show you. Here's the interesting thing. Instead of looking at this from like a top down, I'm going to draw a pyramid, which is kind of ironic, right? <laughs> This is maybe, this is you at the bottom right here. And you're building these foundational blocks. And maybe these are like your first four big leaders. Like you've started, you don't have anyone that's like wanting to run with you yet. Oh shoot, can you even see that? You probably can't even see that, hold on. Pause the game, pause the game. My markers are the bane of my existence. Okay. So these pillars are like maybe the, the four people, like you got to a place where these are the four first people that are gonna work with you, okay? And then they start recruiting some and so on. And then they start recruiting some. Let me show you what happens. We're just gonna say that this might be like at gold. If you haven't built into this leg, you haven't like your level one people, if you haven't done a good enough job of coaching them and teaching them how to think, and maybe you've micromanaged, or maybe you have totally been hands off, whatever it is, but you're not coaching them on how to actually think of this as a career, this leg right here is going away or that, that level of leadership. And then this leg falls down. Like this, this row comes down and then this row comes down. And then what you're left with is four levels deep of people that you don't know that keep falling down to you instead of like, instead of building foundational building blocks as you're going, because when you teach this person how to do the business better than you do, that's a solid team. And then that person teaches their team and that person teaches their team. But what's happening is you're like, okay, let's just go really fast. And let's just like pour into these people. And like, all we need to think about is like pushing to the next rank. And we're just going to like pour into these people and like show them how to do these things. But you're not actually like pouring into these people. And I'm going to tell you how to do that in a second. They start crumbling one by one. And that's when you find yourself at silver having to rebuild. I don't want you to have to do that anymore. Yes, are people gonna leave? Absolutely. But what I would love for you to do is actually find your people and become the leader that you're looking up to right now. Like Britt, like Fran, like the people at the top of the company, what do they have? What, what are they miss? What are you guys missing that they have, that they figured out? It's that they know how to pour into these people the right way. They're building solid teams, okay? So here's what we're going to talk about. Um, John Maxwell has done, um, he has a podcast and he does a two-part series on building trust. And so I have taken that and I have made it network marketing style. So I'm going to tell you kind of the seven points, but I've put them into, into network marketing type concepts for you guys. Okay. Here's the number one thing that will keep you from 
building a, a business that's going to crumble. This is the number one thing that's going to help you build the business that you're looking for. And it's trust. And that might seem like kind of a shock because you're like, wait a second, like what, but isn't it like just giving them my time or get whatever it is? No, it's actually building trust. Trust is the foundation of your business. Building trust into your people is the foundation. And I'll tell you how. So the first thing, how to, and this is how we're going to earn trust with our people. The first thing is emotional equity. I think he calls, I think he calls it um, consistency, but I like to think of it as emotional equity because, um, because what you're doing is you're doing what you say, and then you're following through with what you're, with the, the things that you've already said you're going to do. It's always following through on that. So that way, when you get to gold, it's not, you're not recruiting people and you're like, I'm going to be with you the whole way. But then the back of your mind, you're like, but I think I'm actually going to leave and you'll be fine. It'll be fine. Emotional equity says, I do what I say I'm going to do. Winston, uh, Michael Winston said, effective leaders ensure that people feel strong and capable. In every major survey on practices of effective leaders, trust in the leader is essential if other people are going to follow that person over time. People must experience the leader as believable, credible, and trustworthy. And one of the ways that trust is developed, whether it's in the leader or any other person, is through consistency in behavior. Trust is also established when words and deeds are congruent. That quote's by Michael Winston. So one of the most fundament, fundamental basis perceived by people as trustworthy is predictability. So when you tell people, come join me, come follow me, it's not going to be this, I'm here one day, I'm there, I'm gone the next, I'm questioning this. It's, it's a commitment overall to this company and to your people. Predictability refers to the degree of confidence that people have in their expectation about another person's behaviors or intentions. You have to be the rock. You have to be the reliable one. You have to be unshakable. Does that mean that you never have bad days? No. And the big, and here's the next one. So the first one is going to be emotional equity. Number two is vulnerable communication. Now, here's what I mean by that. This is discerning what to share with your downline and what to share with your upline and what to share with a coach. Because I believe, I truly believe that both are required, good news and bad news to your downline and to your upline, all, all are needed. The more, like, the more that you can bring them into the process so they know this is what's hard. Here are my solutions to doing that. Not just like dumping all of your thoughts on your downline, but having discernment to know what's appropriate for your downline and what's appropriate for your upline and what's appropriate for sidelines or a coach, but also being willing to be vulnerable with them. Because here's the deal. It's not always all sunshine and rainbows. And if you're telling me every single day, it's going to be fine. Everything's fine. Everything's amazing. Sunshine and rainbows. It's awesome. Everything's amazing. All things are awesome. Either you're lying or you're not telling me exactly what's going on. Either way, I, you, this, is, this is not realistic. It's important to share when things are hard, but here's the solution. Okay, so that is a, a piece of leadership is learning how to discern between that. Here's one of the best things that you can do. And like coaching 101 is be a good listener. People often ask me, like, what's the difference in coaching and counseling? And I believe it's listening real in coaching. It's listening really well, and it's asking the right questions. So here's, here are a couple of things that good listeners do. They get really curious. If you're my client, you know this. I say all of the time, get curious. If you have a downline, rather than assuming that you know what they're going through or you know what's going to fix them or you know what their problem is, ask them questions mine their brain for information. This is like what I do, what I get paid a lot of money to do is I mine my clients' brains to figure out where's the root of where that thought is coming from. Probe for clarification. Get curious. Listen for the unvoiced emotions. Empathize. Summarize what they're saying really well. Get rid of the distractions while they're listening to you. 
or while you're listening to them. Do not have a bunch of other things going. You guys, anytime that I'm on a phone with a client, my phone is either off or it's on airplane mode. I'm not looking at anything else besides your eyes if I'm on the phone with you. You get an hour of my time. And that is very hard to come by because in network marketing, we're always talking about like multitasking and I can do 25 things and it's amazing and it's awesome. And what we're missing out on is those moments of intentionality that we have with our people where we can listen really well and actually figure out what's going on. And you will, you will retain more people if you learn how to listen well. Okay, here's a couple of things that good listeners don't do. They interrupt, they respond too soon, uh, they jump to conclusions, they have judgment about the situation, they try to solve the problem too quickly, they take, they're distracted. Like these are the things that if you can learn to master, your calls won't take three hours with your people anymore. You can ask the right questions and you can get to the heart of the matter in a very short amount of time if you know how to listen really well and ask the right questions. Okay, so number two is vulnerable communication or communication in general. Number three is confidence. Teach what you know. Lead by example. Follow, like focus on your own thoughts more than you focus on other people. This is the confidence in what you're doing is, is to build your team and show your people what you're doing because of, and let your people see what you're doing because of, because of what you're doing, not what you're teaching them. Show them what you know. More is caught rather than taught. More is caught rather than taught. Show them how to work this. Don't get to a certain rank and then sit back and say, well, I'm making 4K a month. I mean, it feels pretty good. And I don't know, I can focus on other things. There's one thing that I heard when I was a long time ago, when I was in network marketing is somebody told me, don't start living like you're a diamond when you're a certain rank before you don't like live in that place before you get there yet. Don't start spending money like a diamond yet. When you get to a rank that seems really comfortable, start setting aside money, being, being responsible with that. And then pour in your team, pour into your team, hire a housekeeper, pour into your team. Hire a nanny, pour into your team. Go out on date nights so you have time with your husband and then pour into, pour into your team. Go on vacation and show your team what it means to take time off, okay? So number three is confidence. Number four, I think you guys use this word a lot because I hear it all the time, but number four is edify and empower. So edify, in my brain at least, is being coachable, accountable, and humble and learn from those have, that have done it before. Don't assume that you know best. Don't assume because you've been in a company before. Don't assume that you're doing it all differently and, and it's going to be awesome because I'm doing it totally like learn from your leaders and then take those things and make them yours, but be humble and be coachable and don't be too proud. The second one is empower, train your people, trust your leaders and hold your team accountable. Okay, number five is one of the most important ones in my opinion. Ask permission to hold people accountable. I think in my, in my opinion, what happens when you come into network marketing is you, as you grow, if you are a hard worker, your belief is like, I just need to hold my people accountable. I just need to ask them the hard questions and risk the relationship and just like go in for it and give them the hard truth and give them a butt kicking and just encourage the socks off of them. And what I see often with my clients, especially as they are moving up in the ranks, is they never gave permission for someone else to hold them accountable. So you as the leader, before you go out and you start holding someone accountable, the first thing you do is you ask permission for them. Can it, do I have your permission to hold you accountable? And then you, ask, you help them set their goals. Okay, so we're going to set these goals. Do I have permission to hold you accountable to these things? And then you earn their trust and respect to ask the hard questions and risk the relationship. In coaching language, we say, if you're not willing to say the hard things or say the things ne they need to hear, then you're not doing your job and risking the relationship. Otherwise, they're just paying you to be a really good friend. I am not going to sit here, especially as your coach, and to tell you, you're doing so good. Oh my gosh, I can't believe she said that. Can you even believe what she's doing? Oh, it's so, never. 
I, if you're, if you are paying me or if you're sitting across from me, you better believe if you say something like that, I'm not going to be in the boat with you. I'm not going to tell you it's okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to like just be empathetic to you. I'm going to ask you why that's something that you're focusing on. We're not going to sit there. And I expect that you are doing that with your people too. Do not get in the boat with them. Meaning don't, don't be in agreement with them about it. Listen to the facts of what's actually happening and ask the right questions. Uh, there's a, there's another quote and it says, um, being, being able to risk the relationship. This means to have others trust you, you must actively take some initiative and can't wait for others to make the first move. Meaning don't be the first one. You need to be the first one to either say you're sorry or be accountable or be the person that says, I'm going to be, I'm going to take the risk right now. And I'm going to go in and say the hard thing. I find, I find often that what is usually happening and what breaks teams apart is there is miscommunication and misunderstood. We're being misunderstood and we're not talking about it. And so it just festers and then it breaks apart. And then it's, I want to switch teams. I'm going to leave. I'm going to do something else. And I'm sorry to tell you, but when you do that, you take yourself with you wherever you go rather than having the hard conversation. Communication, I think, is probably one. People, people don't quit teams. They don't quit organizations or company. They quit people, right? I worked in HR for 10 years. People quit people. People will leave your team because of you. If you are not willing to have a hard conversation and apologize and be humble and go in and do the hard thing, do the right thing. Okay. No, that was number five. Number six, focus on others more than you focus on yourself. I guarantee I could, I will almost make you a promise that if you focus more on your team's goals instead of your own, you will win. When you start focusing on helping your people reach their goals, instead of just focusing on yours, you will win. Give more than you get. Be more focused on your team than you are on yourself. And number seven is gain credibility. So John Maxwell says, personal character can be the difference between achieving long-term long -term commitment or settling for mere compliance. And here's, here are four things that he says about character. Number one, character is more, more than talk. Action is the real indicator. Character is more than talk. Uh, num sorry, number seven is gain credibility. So four comments about character. Number one, character is more than talk. Action is the real indicator. Number two, talent is a gift. Like the things that we're born with, the things that we can do, speaking or social media or being an influencer or whatever, talent is a gift. Character is a choice. Number three, character brings lasting success with people. If this is where you focus, if your efforts are focused on, focused on building your character, people will come to you. Your biggest rock stars will stick around, not because of what you've done for them, but because of who you are. Your biggest, the, the, the people that you are, that are on your dream team list will say yes to you because of your character, because they've seen consistency, predictability, honesty, vulnerability, good communication, all of these things. These are how you attract, attract those people. And the number four out of the common characteristics about character is working out of integrity. I think in this, I think that something that I see in network marketing consistently is like, you guys are always getting blasted right? It's like a new influencer on, on TikTok is going live and doing her TikToks every day and mocking network marketers, right? It's like you're always on the other side of some sort of misunderstanding or joke or, oh, she thinks that about me or whatever it is. And so because of that, it puts us into this position where we feel defensive, where we feel like we just need to like explain ourselves. And I, in my opinion, and I have felt this I can't even tell you how often. And if you've been in a relationship with a narcissist, you know what this feels like, but you feel misunderstood all of the time. 
And so when you feel that way and then you go to work, what do you do? In, instead of like working out of integrity, you're working to not be misunderstood anymore and you're overcompensating. And I would encourage you to just ask the Lord and go really deep with him and say, what, is, what does being an in integrity look like in this business? And how will I know that? And I don't know how this is going to come across, so take it or leave it. I had one of my clients come to me the other day, and she was talking to me about being on a power hour. And she was like, I, I don't know, some of the things I just feel so forced. And I, and I told her, she said, how do I make sure that when I'm following up with people, it's not forced? And my response to her was, I want you to ask yourself what your thought is before you go and do that. Is it, are you doing it because you're on the power hour or are you doing it because you know it's, oh, I forgot and I need to follow up because it's just time to do that. That is out of like, when you ask yourself what your motivation is for following up, for asking if they need another order or for messaging this person, are you doing it out of integrity for them or for you? Do you really believe they're going to be amazing at this business or are you just blowing smoke? Integrity and I, and I believe the gift of the Holy Spirit working together mean that when you reach out to that person, they feel that. And you're no longer having to, having to compensate for being misunderstood. Okay, so I'm going to go over those seven again just so you can have them if you miss any of them. Number one is emotional equity. These are my not, these are, and I can give you the worksheet that John Maxwell did because his look a, a little bit different, but emotional equity, vulnerable communication. Number three is confidence. Number four is edify and empower. Number five is ask permission to hold them accountable, hold your team accountable. Number six is focus on others as well as you focus on yourself. Number seven is gain credibility. I think that, and, and this is like the truest, the, like the truest piece of like my being is I believe this industry is like one of them. It's one of the most incredible industries on the planet. And from what I've seen and the research I've done and the people that I surround myself with, it is going to grow in such a massive way. And you guys are setting the trend for integrity and character and doing it right from the top down. And because of that immense privilege that you have to be a part of this team, to be a part of this company, you get to set the trend. You get to set the tone. You get to do it right. That it is, it is a huge responsibility to be the thought leaders of the industry is a massive undertaking. And I totally believe that the Lord's hand is in this business and, and is in queue and I, and and with your leadership. And I think that because of that, you are held to a higher standard. And that can be really tough sometimes because it, because it makes us feel like, ah, oh, this is too much. It's too much pressure. I can't do this. But what I really believe is the Lord is calling you to something higher. And that integrity only comes from discernment from the Holy Spirit. Okay. So your action items tonight, if you want to do any of these, is if you haven't um, ever read the book, um, I think it's Five Levels of Leadership by John Maxwell. Five levels? Five levels. Go do that. That's a big piece of humble pie if you've never read it before because you open it up and you're like, I'm totally a, a level five leader. This is going to be amazing. And then you get in and you're like, oh, I'm not even level one. Like what? I mean, I read that book and I think I was a two when I first read it. And I was like, there's no way. I'm like self-aware. I work in human resources. There's no seriously, something's wrong here. Um, go get that book and read it and evaluate where you're at in your leadership and look at the people on your team and ask yourself if these seven things are things that you are doing for your team, or if you're just sitting back and waiting for your team to just come to you and grow. Okay. I love you guys a lot, a lot, a lot. Wait, you're the best. You guys, I told you, I warned you it's fire every time. Um, and in, in the beginning, I would say maybe a year ago, people would ask me, you know, Britt, what are your top two tips? Like, what are your, what are your favorite, what are your top tips in this business? And I would always just say, you have to be excited and you have to be confident because that's what I did in the beginning. I was excited and I was confident and it grew like crazy. 
but getting into it a little ways like I am now and like a lot of you are now that doesn't matter your excitement and your confidence don't matter if you're not consistent I am so passionate you probably heard me talk about it you guys I see so many people binging their business they like literally like almost like when someone has an eating disorder like you go and you binge and then you kind of set it away for a while um when there's a convention, when there's promos, it's so easy to like dive back in and post all over your social media. But then when it's not very exciting, you put it down. So you want to know what that does when you're like this, you, like Whitney said, you lose trust with your team, the people who've already trusted you. They're like, what is she doing? I don't know. (laughs) You're also losing trust with the people that are watching you. People will not trust you and they will not partner with you if they do not see you being consistent because they know they won't be able to rely on you. So please, you guys be a consistent leader, whatever that looks like for you. If it's like down here, great, stay there. If it's up here, stay there, be consistent. Uh, I just think that that is gonna take you so much farther in this business than anything else. So stay consistent, have integrity, good people get good deals. You guys know what Jake says, do the right things for the right reasons. Let's go crush the rest of this month. Uh, So proud of you guys. Love you guys. And we'll see you next week. Thank you, Wit.